Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're using GoLive CS2, it's Adobe GoLive CS2 here, to create some CSS based rollovers. And this is really, really an easy way to create some rollovers using CSS. Now, CSS is an incredibly useful and powerful way to style and design your pages. You can style and design everything from images to text to adjusting the way stuff's laid out. Um, needless to say, CSS is really awesome, and you should really uh, begin to learn about it. And this is going to be an easy way to begin learning about CSS and see how really easy it is to work with, uh, especially here in Go Live. Um, they, Adobe has really done an excellent job of making it very easy to work with CSS here in Go Live. So we're going to take a look at that. Now, CSS is the powerful, quick, easy way to do this. You can do this with HTML. But you really want to do it with CSS. Well, I mean, if for nothing else, it's it's just a cool way to do it now. But <laughs> but seriously, CSS is the way to go because HTML you can't do things like get rid of that line underneath your links. That's a nice thing to do to your links. You can't have rollovers with HTML. But I'm going to show you how to change the color of your links and everything in HTML first, and then we're going to do it in CSS. And you tell me which way you prefer. I'm going to come over here, I'm going to drag my inspector palette onto the site and I'm going to come up here to the properties section of my page window. Show the page properties. You can see it's showing me the page properties. My link color, it's just blue. Okay, My active link, that's when the link is being clicked down and then my visited link. It's just, th these are your link options here. You can change the color of what it looks like after somebody clicks on it while they're clicking down on it and just the color of it. And as soon as we do that, it changes the way our links look page wide. That's not enough options for me. I don't like that. And you can see here, I've got these standard links. If I preview this, oops, don't want to preview it in Firefox. I want to preview it in Opera. And here you can see we have our links set up down here, one of which has been clicked. So that's that purple. But I don't like any of those colors. And certainly, if you're designing a page, you want as much control over your text as you can because you can have an awesome site as far as design is concerned and then just throw plain text into it and it just does not look good. So being able to control your text to the maximum degree is pretty important. So let's take a look here. Let's click the CSS Editor icon right up here in the very right hand side almost at the top almost looks like steps it's just a few blocks of color we're going to click that and we have opened our CSS editor now we're going to create a style that applies to markup elements and that is going to be this one right here so we're going to click that and we get this little drop down menu we get a link a visited a hover and a active those are all of our link types this is just a regular link when somebody's rolling over it, when somebody's pressing down on it, and when it's been visited. So we're going to select the regular link first. And over here, we have all these tabs. We've got the selector. We can comment it. Uh, we have all of our textual options in here. And this is where we're going to stay. We're going to stay right in here. We're not going to worry about any of these layout options, background properties, anything like that. We're just going to worry about our text. And you can see right now, our default color is just plain bright blue. I don't like that. Now, another thing, before I go making changes here, notice in your inspector palette, the inspector palette is going to give you a live preview of what your changes are going to look like. Now, we don't really have to worry about this because we have our links right here across the bottom of the page, so we can kind of watch them as we make changes and save our CSS editor. So, we're going to start here by changing the color of our links first. Now, instead of just picking one of these colors, we can you know, choose any one of these uh, color libraries here and choose a color. I don't like that. I'm just going to click on the color swatch here. And over here on my color palette, I can select the eyedropper tool. I'm going to come out here into the beach photo. Oops, I want to select index.html. I need to move my CSS editor down a little bit so I can view the entire beach photo there. I'm going to select that color swatch again and select the eyedropper tool. And I'm just going to grab one of these darker sand tones. They're really not sandy. They're more brown. 
So let's just take that one there. And you can see our inspector palette's changed and our links have changed. Very nice. Let's change the size of our font to pixels. That will allow for more, uh, the fonts will look the same, the size will look the same um, on both Mac and Windows operating system, Windows machines, Mac machines, um, because they both display text differently. If we rely on pixels, uh, we will get a more accurate operating system to operating system uh, crossover consistency. It will look closer to being the same. It's an easy way to put it. We're going to change the size to 14 pixels. If I haven't completely confused you with my little Mac and Windows thing there. Um, I'm also going to add a font family. So we're going to come down here and create a new font family, not just a new font. And I'm going to select the Helvetica set. So you can see that Helvetica font will be our default font, and then it just keeps going back from that until we get to Microsoft Sans Serif. We don't want that to be our font. But it's in the font family, and that's just the very last font. If none of the other fonts are available, the browser will default to that. So 95% of people probably will not default to that. So you don't really have to worry about that. But it's just there, just in case. All right, one other thing you want to change is the text decoration. We want to set this, we want to set this text to have no decoration. So we're going to click that. That gets rid of that line underneath it. Okay, you see that the line's there? The line's gone. We can give it a line overhead. I don't want to do that. We can make it blank. We can make all kinds of different things happen here. But we're just going to stick with no decoration at all, just like that. That's perfect. So that's it for the link. We're just going to click out here into this white space, and it's going to bring us back to the original CSS editor dialog window. And we're going to choose something for our visited state. I'm going to select that. And for visited, we're going to give this a desaturated blue. Let's, uh, let's select the eyedropper, and let's give this one of these sort of dark desaturated blue blue tones just kind of like that that's perfect we're going to set the size to pixels and 14 pixels as well we don't want the size to really change when people roll over them um, although maybe on hover we'll have it get 15 pixels just a little bit bigger we're going to give this no decoration um, for a visited font and we're going to give this the Helvetica font set as well click out and we're going to create a markup that applies to hovers now here on the hover we want to remember that over on the link we have this dark brown tan as our color. So we want to have something that you're going to be able to tell it's changing when you roll over it. So I'm going to select the color swatch, grab my eyedropper tool, and let's grab, let's see if we can find an even darker tan. Well, actually, yeah, a really dark tan like that, or really brown. I'm going to come back over to the link, and I'm going to make this one a little semi lighter tan, maybe like that. Yeah, that's a little better. And then when someone hovers over, you're really going to be able to tell because it's going to turn almost black. And now looking at that, that might be a little bit too dark. Let me get something here off the coconut now. Let's just take... There. That's fine. That dark brown, tan, gray looks just fine for the hover. And we're going to once again change this to pixel and make this, we'll make it go to 15 pixels when somebody rolls over it. But we're also going to make an overline appear when somebody rolls over the text. You can't see it there now because you're not rolling over it. We're going to put an overline and we're going to give this the Helvetica font set as well. Click back and get back to our original CSS editor page. And for our active link, um, for our active link, let's use a basically a really dark brown and almost completely black, really a dark gray. That's what we use. Just go over your color palette, switch to a dark gray, virtually black, and that's for the active link. That's when you're in the act of clicking down on that link, and the size, do pixels. 14 pixels. I'm not going to give it any decoration. And we are going to give this the Helvetica font set as we have. And now you can see we've got the little asterisk up there at the top of our CSS editor. That means that we have not saved it yet. 
Command or Control S to save it and close that out. Now, I'm going to preview this over in Opera and see what we've done. When I come down, when I roll over home, you can see it gets a little bigger and that line appears on top. When I click down, the line goes away and it turns almost completely black. And then over here, About JW, we've already visited that, that page. So you can see it said desaturated blue. So there, it's that easy. We've just created a whole bunch of rollovers using CSS. Now, it won't even take you as long as it's taken me to explain it to do this in your own pages. And it's going to be super quick. And anytime you want to change it, well, let me move the inspector palette out of the way. Click on the CSS editor, select visited, and you come in, edit the color, edit the size, edit the font family, edit the decoration, edit anything you want. You can edit it all using the CSS editor, and it's really easy to do. And I really recommend that you get into using CSS because, as I mentioned earlier, it's the cool way to go. So that's one of the reasons you want to do it. So that's it. We've created CSS rollovers in GoLive. It's really easy. I hope you learned something from this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you for watching, and please go check out the website. That's www.tutvid.com.